this video, we'll be taking up the first of two homework sheets for reciprocal of a quadratic function. So the first question, they asked us to copy and complete this table. So I didn't really show all my work. So, um, you know, I'm going to fill in the first cell and show you what you can do. So on the first lesson, what I did was I approached negative two from the right side. Uh, so what I could do, like build a table and show you um, negative 1.9, negative 1.99, negative 1.999 to show you what f of x is, the behavior of f of x, whether it's approaching pause infinity or neg infinity. So what I also could do is show you this. So as x approaches negative 2 from the right, you have this. And you use your imagination a little. So negative two from the right, this factor here, x plus two, if it's neg slightly greater than negative two, then this factor I'm hoping you realize will be a positive value. And then negative two plus five, negative two from the right doesn't really matter. This is still gonna be positive. So guess what? Therefore, f of x approaches Pause infinity. How do I know? Positive, positive. That's a positive number. So remember, there's one of two choices. It's either pause infinity or neg infinity. So this calculation here shows you that it's going to approach pause infinity because both factors are going to yield positive values. Now it's pause infinity because this number here, not only is it positive, it's a very, very small positive number, which makes the denominator a very, very small positive number, which means f of x is going to approach infinity. So for question one, I filled in the table and then I uh, basically did all the calculations. You can show them uh, like I did on the piece of paper or just look at the equation and just work with the factors in your head. Um, for as x approaches infinity and negative infinity, you can generate a table and show yourself the, the trend of the behavior for the function. So like for infinity, uh, you can see what f of 100 is, what f of 1000 is, what f of 10,000 is, and you'll see that the values are getting closer and closer and closer to zero, but they're slightly greater than zero. Okay, the values will always be slightly greater than zero, but it's approaching zero. Uh, for question two, they ask us for the vertical asymptotes, so I have to factor the denominator to find the zeros for the, the polynomial of the denominator. Um, and then they ask me to state the domain. So once I have the vertical asymptote, it's pretty easy to state the domain. Uh, B was actually, um, there were no vertical asymptotes because the, the quadratic um, had no real zeros. Uh, for question three, I had to tell you, tell you when is it greater than zero? Uh, when is it less than zero? Uh, when is it increasing? When is it decreasing? Uh, luckily, they gave me the graph, so that was pretty easy. Uh, they gave me uh, the graph, and they also asked me for the equation. So I generated the factors of the denominator given the vertical asymptote. Um, now for this one, 3, 8, the, the factor must be squared because you can see from both sides of the vertical asymptote, the behavior was both going towards pause infinity which is a clear indication that the factor was, squ was squared. Um, and then I subbed in the point one, one, and I solved for A. For B, same thing, I had the graph in front of me so I can find out when is it greater than zero, when is it less than zero, when is it increasing, when is it de decreasing, and I solved for the factors of the denominator using the vertical asymptote. Then I subbed in the point that was provided for me and it solved for the, the numerator value, which is five. Okay, and then for question four, they gave me lots of different functions and they asked me for basically everything. Equations of asymptotes, domain, x-intercept, y-intercept, sketch it. When is it increasing? When is it decreasing? When is it positive? When is it negative? Give me the range. So it was basically everything. So not much to say. Um, I basically generate the graph and then I can I can give everything. Um, and the graph, like I said, my strategy is always find intercepts, find the asymptotes, and I can give you the graph very, very quickly. Anyways, that's, 
that's uh, the graph for 4a, there's a graph for 4b, and 4c. So basically all three scenarios, you have your double vertical asymptote, single vert vertical asymptote, no vertical asymptote. Okay, 4 was pretty long. 5, what is 5? Let's see. They ask us to sketch uh, each function. So I found the intercepts, the asymptotes, and I pieced it together. Uh, yep, so that was all of 5. Find the asymptotes, find the intercepts, piece it together. For question 6, they ask us to find the the local max or local min uh, if it existed and that only existed for let's see oh uh, 5 a b and c because for 5d it was the local it was a it was a global minimum point it wasn't a local max or local min um, so to find the point you uh, take the value from the vertical asymptotes and average them because those values on the reciprocal of the quadratic function come from the quadratic function. So just like just for the same reason you averaged the, um, the zeros of a quadratic function to find to help you find the vertex, I'm using the exact same logic here to help me find the local min or local max point. Uh, for 6a I didn't do much work here. I didn't do much work for 6a because um, the local max point was on the y-intercept. So it's the local min point. The local min point is on the, the y-axis. It's the y-intercept. So um, I didn't have to do much work. Uh, so yeah, so 6b and 6c, I averaged it and then I solved for the, the y-coordinate. And then I can tell you what the local min point is for 6b and 6c. I just realized for 6b and 6c, so I'm looking at my solution, it's a local max point. It's a max, it's a max. I don't know why I wrote min here. Let me uh, fix that up very quickly. Max, max. It's a local max point. Okay, uh, for question seven, we have just a very quick word problem where uh, we have two uh, variables, brightness and distance, inversely proportional, uh, and it's inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Anyways, solve for the equation, draw a quick little graph, solve some word problems, uh, not much to say, not much to say. I would focus on questions one through six uh, and seven is just a little bonus. We'll, we'll do the word problems uh, very soon.